Good evening, I'm Lucinda Gabriel, and today we are August 17, 2023. But today I want to share a message that's been on my heart lately, and I think many people have been living um, difficult times and similar things, and from the people that I've encountered over the past few weeks, and, uh, and shared with them a bit what God has been telling me since, what, July? Um, so for the past, yeah, three weeks about, he's been uh, really working on a lot of people um, right now. And so I've received some messages, which I will share at the end of this one, um, which is biblical. And uh, I want to, yeah, just share with you what God put on my heart and what he is actually doing with everyone right now. So there is a purpose to the suffering that people are going through. And that's the, the hope that I want to bring you tonight. There's a reason for it. And so what the Lord has been telling me lately is that he's wanting to make us vessels of honor. And I'm going to talk to you about what vessels of honor is. So many of you, my brothers and sisters, I know you're living challenges right now. And that is shaking you up, you know, including myself. And these challenges are there to push us to take a good, hard look at our life and the condition of our heart. And uh, and there's a reason, you know, and I asked God, like, why, Lord, why are we living this, right? And this is what his reply was, is that we're entering into a new season. And this new season will require us to be more prepared for what is to come in the one after. And so, yeah, there's different seasons ahead of us. And anyone that's watching the end times timeline, you know that tribulations are at the door. And we must be ready for it, right? And I haven't talked a lot about these things lately, but I will. I will. Maybe not tonight, but I'm going to do some next messages about what's to come because I've talked to you about them before and the things to prepare for. And if you haven't seen that, I invite you to go check out my YouTube channel. And there was like at least six videos in a row about preparing for the end times, persecution and all these things that are coming. And so this, what's happening right now is preparing us spiritually to be ready for those things to come. And so uh, anybody that knows me, knows that I'm not a pre-tribulation rapture believer. And so I do believe that we will be here. And just like it says in Matthew 24, and there's going to be hard times coming. And we must prepare for that persecution that's to come. And that's what I believe God is working on us uh, right now. We need to allow the Lord to discipline us, to refine us, and to build our character before these hard times come upon us. Because if we don't, we won't be ready and we won't make it. Those who endure till the end shall be saved, right? We'll be saved. So remember that we need to be getting stronger every day, uh, getting closer, more intimate with the Lord every day. We need to be sanctified, to be holy, and we need to learn how to really love one another and to be at peace. This is, you know, the gist of it, right? This is what he's telling me. So what is a vessel of honor? A vessel of honor is a special vessel, a vase, something like a vase that is set apart to be used for special occasions. And God wants us to be special, to be set apart, to be clean vessels that he can use for every good work. So how does one become a vessel of honor? So we're going to go and read in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. It says, this is Paul reading to Timothy, he says, Now in a large house there are not only vessels and objects of gold and silver, but also vessels and objects of wood and earthware. And some are for honorable, which is noble and good use, and some for dishonorable, like ignoble and common use. And if you keep yourself pure, he says to Timothy, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. So how do we become clean and sanctified vessels for God to use? Paul says to Timothy in verse 22 onward, he says, run away from youthful lust, right? So that means keep away from, from lust. Pursue righteousness. So means be morally right. Pursue faith, love, and peace with those believers who call on the Lord 
with a pure heart. So be righteous, pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those believers who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So run away from sexual immorality, it's saying, and be morally right, be faithful, be loving, and seek peace with your brothers and sisters. And then it continues, but have nothing to do with foolish and ignorant speculations, meaning useless disputes over unedifying, stupid controversies. I'm reading from the Amplified. Since you know that they produce strife and give birth to quarrels. So avoid disputes, un unedifying conversations and worldly things. And it continues, the servant of the Lord must not participate in quarrels but must be kind to everyone, even tempered, preserving peace, and he must be skilled in teaching, patient and tolerant when wrong. So we must be skilled in teaching, be patient and be tolerant when we're wrong. He must correct those who are in opposition with courtesy and gentleness in the hope that God may grant that they will repent and be led to the knowledge of the truth accurately understanding and welcoming it and that they may come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil having been held captive by him to do his will so what should we avoid to be honorable vessels it says remind everyone about these things and command them in god's presence to stop fighting over words such arguments are useless and they can ruin those who hear them Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. Avoid worthless, foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. And Paul also says that we're called to be good soldiers of Christ. We're called to teach these truths of the good news to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. And Paul tells Timothy, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. And athletes cannot win the prize unless they follow rules. And hardworking farmers should be the first to enjoy the fruit of their labor. Think about what I'm saying. The Lord will help you understand all these things. What Paul is saying to us all is to endure suffering and don't be preoccupied with what's going on in the world around us, but follow the commands of God and work hard in the kingdom and we will be rewarded. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead and that is the good news that I preach. And because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal, but the word of God cannot be chained. So I'm willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those that God has chosen. Finally, we read in 2 Timothy 2.19, But God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone in this inscription. The Lord knows those who are His, and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. Right? So God knows exactly who belongs to him and all of those, all of us who belong to him, we must turn away from evil, which is sin. We must turn away from sin. Many people right now in the body of Christ is going through some refining if they allow the Lord to discipline and refine them. And the Bible says that it's good when you are disciplined by the Father because it means that you belong to him. And if you were not his, he would not discipline you. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And you, have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. So as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. This is Paul speaking. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by his father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? 
for our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they knew how but God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness no discipline is enjoyable while it is happening it's painful true but afterwards there will be peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way so take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees make out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong so god is searching for vessels of honor right now those who are willing to let go of selfish ambition pride bitterness offense lust whatever it is that the you know the devil has a grip on you about he's looking for those who are willing to be tried by fire purified and made holy and you know the ones who are ready to lay down their lives for jesus the apostle paul first known as saul was a pharisee a religious leader right and who was persecuting the believers and he was a chosen vessel by god in acts chapter 9 verses uh, 13 it says uh, Ananias answered the Lord, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So in the years to come, we also are called to be vessels of God. And we also are called to suffer for his namesake, just in the same way Paul did. In Matthew 24, verse 9, it says, And they will de deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my namesake. So know that God is preparing us for the next season. And he's preparing us believers who will suffer for his namesake because we will want to live godly lives, right? And if we want to live godly lives, we will suffer. Second Timothy chapter 3. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil people and imposters will flourish and they will deceive others and will themselves be deceived but you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught and you know the things that we are taught we know right from wrong and we know that we're in a time in this world where good is called evil and evil is called good and we need to stand strong on the truth of what's right and what's wrong so i believe that we will also see and experience his glory throughout all of this, throughout the persecution and throughout all the, the darkness that's coming in the world, we will experience God's glory. Dark days are coming quickly, but God's glory will only shine even brighter. Second Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verse 7 says, We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars. We're like vessels containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. And God has been saying to me that people need to call themselves believers. People who call themselves believers, I mean, need to come out of Babylon. And we need to make ourselves holy as he is holy, right? Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11, depart, depart, come out from there. Touch no unclean thing, God says. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean, you who bear the vessels of the Lord. So we are the vessels. We bear the vessels of the Lord. We are the ark of the testimony today. You know, bearing the testimony of God. And we need to come out of the world. We need to come out of Babylon and be pure and perfect, clean, sanctified vessels for the Lord. For, you know, so that God can work in us. And the Bible says to consider it an opportunity for great joy when our faith is tested, which is what it's being right now, right? James verse one, chapter, uh, chapter one, verse two to four. Dear brothers and sisters, when your troubles, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And it also says to 
uh, to glory in tribulations. Romans chapter 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint, Paul says, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So we can have this hope. Romans 12. So this is part of the message that I'm going to share with you a little later that, you know, the Lord shared with me. Don't just pretend to love others. You know, the, all this strife that we're living right now and, uh, you know, we're, we're really being pushed um, to examine our hearts. You know, it says don't just pretend to love others. Really, really love them. Uh, this is Romans 12 verse 9. Hate what is wrong, hold tight to what is good, and love each other with genuine affection, and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to pro practice hospitality. And bless those who persecute you and don't curse them, but pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other and don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable and do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will keep burning coals of shame on their heads. And don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Amen. So God is preparing us for the difficult times that is coming upon the whole earth. And he wants to discipline us and prune us right now. And I want to share with you some messages that I received over the past uh, month that I believe is for all of us. And all of all of us that are living something difficult and maybe maybe you're not living it now, but maybe it'll be in a couple of weeks, a month or six months. Uh, but when you do live it, you know, I pray that you remember what the Lord has said and so I asked the Lord one day I said Lord what do we need to prepare for the hard times ahead and how much time do we really have to prepare I asked him this and so this is what his answer was to me and to me and I believe like I said it's for everyone the most important thing you need to prepare my daughter is your hearts you need to cultivate more love towards one another over carrots you need to sow more love and care into one another. You need to stop living like strangers and act more like family because we are a family of God, right? Celebrate more than tolerate. You need to learn how to love. All need to die to self. All need to stop with the me, myself, and I. You need to see yourselves as one unit that works together towards a common goal. Like in the army, you have a unit. The individual dies to himself. <clears throat> Excuse me. You cannot have a unit without unity. Stop letting the devil divide and let go of offenses. Be aware of his cunning ways. In the end, love will be more important than food. You can go without food, but without love for one another, you will not enter my kingdom. I give you two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Do not fail in either. This message is for all of you. Ask yourselves, how can I love more? What need does my brother or sister have that I can meet? Look for ways to love each other and build one another up rather than to tear down. It is like a marriage. Do you love and respect one another? Do you speak kindly and lovingly? Are you harsh and commanding? Are you easily offended? Do you seek your own way or do you seek what is best for others? Do you put, up, do you put others before yourself? And do you really care? What you do to others, you do to me. 
and what you choose not to do to others you also not do to me. Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Which do you choose to be? It is time, my children, not to not only build barns and gardens, but to build strong communities, strong families that will withstand the devil. Be so strong together that the enemy has no foothold in your family. This requires dying to self for the good of the whole. Like letting the old single self go when entering into a marriage. You are no longer two but one. Your focus is no longer on the self but on the other. How can I lift? How can I help? How can I lift? How can I encourage and love, care for the other? How would Christ be? How would Jesus react? Do you have all the fruit of the Holy Spirit working in you? Are you patient? Are you kind? Are you loving? Are you peaceful? Are you charitable? Are you good? Are you gentle? Are you faithful? Do you have self-control? Do you do what you say you will do? Are you kind and merciful towards others? Are you harsh and have expectations? Ask yourselves, how can I love more and better? Many will, will come into the kingdom and many will be broken and in need of love. And are you ready and able to really, really love them? I would like each one of you to look at what you love and admire about the people that are around you and what you dislike. And Satan will point out their faults, you know. And but uh, see them as prayer points is what God is saying. Pray for one another that I will make you more into the likeness of my son. So be Christ-like and be love your father. That was on July 26. I had another message on August 8. And it said, my child, do not neglect to feed the sheep. Prepare their hearts for what's to come, to strengthen them, to encourage them, to instruct them on the ways of the kingdom. Hard times are coming, my daughter, and people's hearts will not, will, will, yeah, will have to be strong, and so will their faith. The enemy will try to divide you more than ever, and if he can get you apart and alone, he will devour who he can. Guard your hearts, my children. Seek peace with everyone and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Tell them to prepare their hearts, my child. Let go of all bitterness, all unforgiveness. Humble yourselves and make right with everyone. And those who choose to stay in their pride and resentment will be weakened and fall by the wayside. Set aside your differences and get on with the work set before you. Learn to really love one another. Stop with the me, myself and I. Take your eyes off of yourselves and put them on others. How may I serve my brother? How may I love my sister more? Be the bigger person. Those who humble themselves will be lifted up. Those who are the least here will be the greatest in heaven. I will resist the proud and there is nothing I hate more than pride. People who are prideful think they know better than me. They judge others and they take my place as judge. They sit on my throne and lord over their own lives. They want me as savior but not, not as lord. I will turn my back on the proud. They have resisted my counsel and my discipline. They choose to go their own way and so I will leave them go. There comes a time when after you have done all you can, you must hand them over to themselves. People will soon realize how their pettiness about day-to-day -day things pales in comparison to my kingdom and my glory. I am coming for a pure and perfect bride without spot or blemish. Difficulties will test you. You will need each other. You will either be made pure and holy or fall into the trap of the enemy. Be on guard. Keep your defenses up against the enemy and keep your armor on. Stay awake and watch. The hour is fast approaching. It is late, my child. I had another message on August 9th, the next day. You are entering into a new season, and that is why it is important to be clean vessels ready for every good work. How can I use you if you are self-centered, self-focused, looking inward and not outward? There is so much need in the world. Many who are called are busy with their lives, enjoying the world like in the days of Noah and not realizing all of this is soon coming to an end. As the day approaches, how should you be? Be godly, my child. Be godly, my children. Come ye out of the world and separate yourselves from amongst them. Come out of Egypt. Egypt is simply luring you with lust enticing you into sin and tempting you away from godliness. Come out of Egypt, my children. Come and serve me. 
Ask me, how may I serve? I have a place and a position for all of you, God said. You can climb the ranks as high as you want by laying down your lives for others. The more you give up, the more you lay down, the higher your position and rewards will be. You can choose if you want to be a simple foot soldier or a general in my army. It all depends on the price you are ready to pay. But be a good soldier and commit yourself to the king and his kingdom. You will work for my son and his rewards are great. Be careful not to be deceived by the enemy with the luxuries and cares of this world. Satan would keep you busy with the management of stuff, the distraction of entertainment, and enticement of pleasures. Put away all such distractions and give yourself completely to the king and the task at hand. Show yourselves approved. Be good examples to others and stay the course. Persevere, endure, hope, and you will see and experience my glory. This is your father. And so this is the message that I have tonight. And God is really calling us to be pure and perfect vessels of honor for his kingdom, for the things to come. And we are all being stretched right now. And we're being purified, brought to the through the fire and being purified like gold. And this is what we should be seeking right now. We should be seeking his face like never before. And asking of asking him to to do like uh, David did, you know, search my heart, O oh Lord, search my heart, O oh Lord, you know, and show me the things that are not pure. So that's the message that I have for this week. And so I pray that it blessed you, and I pray that it brings you deeper into intimacy with God, and ask the Lord to show you things that He wants to to purify and to change, you know, and be willing to lay everything down, any offense any unforgiveness, any brokenness, any rejection, any pride, let it all go because it's not worth keeping you out of the kingdom of God, right? So that's it. God bless you. And I see you again soon. God willing. Good night. Bye-bye.